This week on Rent Wars, we're going to discuss what happened to the Rent Wars YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to discuss the Bola scare. Uh, we have news regarding Preet Pre Barrera uh, looking into voter irreg voting irregularities uh, in the Bronx. Uh, apparently, uh, votes uh, were missing. Um, so last time uh, we discussed how uh, strange it was that Cuomo would do so well in the Bronx. Well, this might explain why. Um, and we also have news on Judge John Gleason, uh, a.k.a. Dimlet. Um, actually, good news, uh, which we'll discuss really quickly. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, he uh, issued, well, he didn't really issue a ruling, but he encouraged the prosecutors uh, to allow him to resentence an accomplice um, of uh, uh, for a felony crime um, where the actual perpetrator uh, got some ridiculously uh, short sentence and you know uh, basically a, a, a flunky or some guy who really wasn't the driving force behind the crime um, took the brunt of of the uh, sentencing um, so that that's a very positive thing. We're going to go into that in greater detail in a future show. Um, and that also brought to light, uh, so, well, it came to light at about the same time that another decision of, uh, or action, rather, of Judge Gleason's, uh, from years ago, um, came to light as well. Uh, which was on a similar vein, which would explain a lot. We were talking about uh, judges being framed. Now, you can be framed for something you actually do, but uh, it is interesting to see who's behind the framing of people and why. Um, <clears throat> but first, we're going to talk about YouTube. Um, now, if you've gone to our YouTube channel, you see that there were like very few views of, of these shows. Um, now, some of the shows, you know, have thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of views. Um, some of the shows have been around for a while, have been on YouTube for a while. The YouTube channel that we had um, was over uh, 10 years old, uh, or maybe 7 years old, and... <clears throat> What happened was, is a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, YouTube uh, on that channel decided that they would no longer take shows over 30 minutes long. Now, why they would do that when we have a library of shows all over 30 minutes long already on uh, is what uh, uh, caused the channel to stop updating. <clears throat> so... Uh, don't worry, there's a new YouTube channel, we were already preparing to move, uh, to a different YouTube channel, uh, there's some technical reasons for that, uh, apparently that old channel has some old stuff left over from YouTube, whereas if we move to a new channel, uh, run completely by the new owners, Google, uh, they would be handled better, uh, so that was already in the works, uh, one of the big reasons was, uh, we wanted to change the title of the channel from Rent Wars being one word to Rent Wars being two words. Uh, so that was already in the works, but this ridiculous um, <clears throat> uh, blocking of our shows, uh, uh, uploading our new shows, uh, caused a sort of a mini crisis over here. Um, and, you know, it hit, of course, while we have other deadlines. Um but don't worry not, everything on the old channel will be on the new channel. The old channel itself will not go down, at least for a while, uh, but it's not going to be updated because we're not going to change our format uh, simply because, uh, you know, that particular channel wants to block us. We also uh, well, were planning to leave because, uh, you know, we had views that mysteriously... Uh, disappeared so we would see 
uh, people leave our website to go to our channel and you would have uh, where, where you would see the person click go to the YouTube channel and then the YouTube channel they, they would simply disappear um, they would click and go to um, you know a particular show uh, watch the show and it wouldn't update the counters so the YouTube counters on that channel uh, were a big problem um, we also had a the blatant uh, disappearance of uh, 100,000 uh, views uh, we had two particular shows that had to be reissued and therefore we we, we lost the uh, 100,000 100, uh, views between those two shows and you know we, we actually showed people um, so it, it, it killed the momentum of the show because the shows were going viral uh, and the question was why um, what could be happening here is, is that that was an old server um, it could also be that you know the particular uh, boss of that server is some sort of like slumlord that lost his uh, you know lo lost his property or something is taking revenge whatever the reason we're out of that YouTube channel and you know hopefully the new YouTube channel uh, we're going to be getting uh, proper credit for all our views um, and that's the expectation uh, the new YouTube channel should be ready in short order uh, there is a delay because of uh, certain other factors but nothing will be missed everything is, is available everything's ready to go uh, it's just a matter of getting uh, the new channel uh, a little a little more primed and hopefully it should be up when this show airs so if you've gone to YouTube and you've wondered why you know we're getting like 10, 10 hits, uh, 10 views. Um, that may have something to do with it. We're not 100% sure how many views we've actually lost. Uh, but we do know we lost a, a straight, almost uh, almost a straight 100,000. It was like 53 and 54. 53,000 on one video, 54,000 on another. Where those videos were just, oh, they're popular, we're canceling them. Um, so we're trying to find out you know what that's about um, of course there's always the possibility that this has something to do with the corrupt federal judges we're discussing um, and you know the timing would, would suggest that but uh, I would think that those particular uh, shows were not uh, the, the subjects of those shows were not in a position to do uh, to, to to block those views or to do anything like that because that's something that takes time um, to set up so uh, <clears throat> we are actually um, if that is true it will be f uh, fantastic because um, there's uh, new stuff in the works where uh, you know some some of this sort of uh, open corruption uh, in the federal uh, arena uh, will come home to roost or is coming home to roost uh, probably as this airs um, you know uh, one of the judges behind some of this stuff uh, uh, are probably getting noticed that some people in Washington are going to be looking into their actions now uh, of course uh, you know Washington's not perfect but I do think uh, if they're doing something uh, this blatant and onward uh, it's going to blow up in their face um, now, uh, so just to, uh, to wrap this up, um, our YouTube channel, you will have to get to the new channel by going to the Rent Wars website, rentwars.com, and by clicking the link, that will take you to the new channel. Once the show airs, that link will be updated to the new channel. Now on to the Ebola scare. Um, <clears throat> One problem uh, I'm having with the current Ebola scare is people don't seem to be taking it seriously enough. Um, if you've uh, ever had the opportunity to see the movie Outbreak starring Dustin Hoffman, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, go see it. But if you've seen it, uh, doesn't this seem very similar? Uh, the, the only problem is is the disease seems similar, but the government response seems uh, 
muted at best. Um, the Outbreak movie dealt with a fictional uh, virus that was apparently based on Ebola. Uh, and they pretty much mentioned, they did mention Ebola in the Outbreak movie. Uh, but they said this this particular version is particularly bad, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it happened, uh, it takes place in Zaire originally. Um, this movie gets released, and there's an Ebola outbreak in Zaire. Uh, and there's a very similar uh, uh, mortality rate. So basically, you get the disease, you, you're almost guaranteed to die. Uh, now, in Outbreak... The virus uh, learns how to uh, be transmitted through the air. Uh, so right now, you know, it's bodily fluids, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, just like Ebola. But it learns to uh, go through the air like the flu. Now, this is a fictional story, or so they say. Uh, and there are these extreme measures to try and contain this deadly, deadly virus that now can be spread very easily like the flu. Um, it, it's amazing to me because in the movie, you have the government bombing uh, locations to try and uh, stop the virus. Although I would think the bombs would actually probably uh, help push the virus up and out to a... a, a help it spread to a further region via air, whether it's airborne or not. Um, it, you know, bodily fluids would be, you know, spread all over the place. Um, <clears throat> in reality, the government gives people a questionnaire. So, yeah, in the movies, the government's taking extreme measures to protect the population or to try and protect the population of the United States. Uh, extremely extreme measures, including... Uh, discussing blowing up a, a fictional town called Cedar Grove. Uh, you know, in reality, they ask people, well, where you been? And that's it. <laughs> so if you're someplace in the world and you're getting sick, the first thing you're going to think of is let's come to America. Because all I got to do is say, no, no, I'm not sick and try to hold your symptoms, get to um, to the United States, and then just go to a hospital. And now they got to take care of you, and you're going to have people struggling mightily to keep you alive. Um, that's like encouragement to, to bring the disease here. Uh, we have, at, at, at this particular time, there's a teenager, a little 14-year-old, well, he may not be little, but he's young, um, who has Ebola-like symptoms here in New York, who just came back from Sudan. Now, he may or may not have the disease, but if he does, this is a very, very, very serious situation. This is a heavily populated part of the country. Uh, now, the prior uh, Ebola victim who came from Liberia went to Texas, um, and he has died now, uh, but he, he basically had an opportunity to spread it to a number of people. They think they've contained uh, the people uh, that he had contact with, but how do you know? Uh, you know, he could have had a fleeting contact with somebody. Um, this is a very serious situation, and to be honest, it, it, it sure, I, I wish Hollywood was in charge of the response instead of the real government. We also have uh, something called Enterovirus 68 running around now. This is a uh, respiratory, uh, respiratorily spread disease that is deadly uh, in in many cases and is related to polio. Now, does it does it seem like there's a lot of pestilence and plague going on here. I mean, it's it's almost like you expect someone to jump up on a soapbox and, and start preaching. Um, are these things random, um, or is this an effect of the global warming? So, in other words, perhaps uh, in the cooler period when the world uh, would cool down uh, regularly for the winters, um, 
and I don't mean just a particular part of it, but the overall temperatures have constantly risen, and this is giving us uh, a situation, uh, you know, that hasn't been in effect for for millions of years in terms of uh, climate. Um, are these viruses uh, sort of restoring their original dominance from ancient times? Uh, would is is it possible that Ebola could marry with the enterovirus 68 and become airborne in real life? Uh, these are questions, you know. I mean, they're they're so smug. They say, "Oh, you can't get it except by bodily fluids." Well, we know that there are doctors uh, who were in uh, Liberia and Sierra, Le Sierra Leone who were taking all of the precautions. Um, who were in their contact suits and who were doing everything possible to avoid being infected, and yet they still got infected. Um, it, it, it seems to me that they are overly smug. Maybe they're just trying to keep people calm, but they are overly smug about uh, how hard it is or easy it is to catch uh, Ebola. Well, <clears throat> Ebola is is a you know a really badass virus uh it is a a plague among plagues uh and it seems like we're rolling out a, a welcome mat for it it really does it, it we're not even saying hey look you, you know we're going to cut direct direct contact between areas that have this extremely extremely uh uh contagious plague uh from coming one plane flight away to New York City. <clears throat> They're just going to ask people, where you been? Oh, look, you know, I'm getting ready to die unless I can get to America and get taken to an emergency room. Well, they're going to say, oh, anywhere but where this plague is from. Um, and you can't really blame them. Um, that's, that's, you know, they're, they're desperate. That's what desperation is. Uh, <clears throat> now... Rush Limbaugh, this this charming fellow named Rush Limbaugh, he says that President Obama, and I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> I don't really listen to the guy, uh, he says that President Obama is bringing the Ebola virus to the U.S. to spread to us as revenge for slavery. So he's bringing the virus here, which, you know, that that sure doesn't seem too far off because they, they're not really reacting i mean we, we really want like we need some hollywood directors to take charge of this uh uh in response to this health scare um but the, the reason he's doing it is revenge for slavery um now this is a fascinating theory you know you can you can say well there's some merit to the first part of it but is revenge for slavery well First of all, Liberia is a country made up of former slaves of the United States of America. So that's a strange way to avenge slavery by uh, sort of wiping out former uh, a country full of former slaves. Uh, for, so from that perspective, though, that makes no sense. That's not revenge. That's suicide, if it was true. So that's one of the reasons why uh, the names from Liberia sound just like Americans, because they were Americans. They're the, the uh, former slaves who took the deal, let's go back to Africa. Um, and that's why they have the names, just like uh, uh, African-American names uh, here in the United States. That's why many, many Liberians have uh, the same African-American names. Um, so we see people who look like African Americans, um, who are in a, in a country uh, that was populated by former slaves, and Rush Limbaugh says, "Well, that proves it's it's revenge for slavery." Well, the, the problem with it is, is the guy from Liberia he didn't he didn't go get off the plane and find the place most heavily populated by rich white people. Uh, he went, of course, to a black neighborhood, and many of the people that he had contact with are African-American. Um, so 
you know, Rush Limbaugh may be on to something, but it's it's not it it's certainly not uh, revenge uh, upon white people for slavery. It sounds more like uh, former slave owners going, well, we've tried this this immigration thing to mess with them. We've incarcerated uh, one out of four African Americans. We've undercut their economic viability. We've created diseases from the syphilis disease, so there's a tradition of the Tuskegee experiment and diseases being perpetrated upon African Americans. And, you know, Rush Limbaugh doesn't say, well, gee, this sort of fits that pattern. And the fact that you have this figurehead Obama on top of the machine, it still doesn't change the fact that this pestilence is being aimed straight at the black community. And the failure to uh, limit access to the country from Ebola locations is going to directly affect the African American community. And because the carriers match and can can fit within the African American community, it, 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 it presents a particular danger to the African American community. So, yes, it may be an attempt at genocide, but the attempt uh, apparently is aimed uh, uh, to follow in the tradition of the Tuskegee experiment, not some some new revenge uh, by Obama, uh, but maybe just allowing the old uh, genocidal traits that have been continuing nonstop, uh, genocidal plots to continue. And, you know, there's precedent for that, because here in, you know, you say, oh, he's a black president, he wouldn't do such a thing, but, you know, here in New York City, New York City, this is, you know, you, you, you don't think of having to march and, and do sit-ins, um, you know, at lunch counters in order to, to, to have lunch here. Um, this is a place where the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, has almost completely suspended our, our, our discrimination laws. This is a place where they have, and I'll go into much more detail in, in other shows, and I've done other details in, in uh, earlier shows, but you know, one thing for sure is having a black president doesn't mean that they actually take their, their, their duties seriously. So we know that the government agency charged with fighting discrimination has openly assisted discrimination. We know that there are all these federal judges um, and federal officers, et cetera, et cetera, who are openly and happily involving themselves in discrimination. And in effect, in, in the Southern District of New York, uh, they have reinstated uh, 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 Plessy v. Ferguson. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Dred Scott. The, the Plessy v. Ferguson's asking too much. Um, so, you know, this, this Rush Limbaugh you know, doesn't seem to have a, a clue as to which direction things go. Like, I guess if you, if, uh, you, you splash water out a tub, you'd say you're trying to fill it. Basically, in addition to seeing Outbreak, which was a 1995 film, um, you should also check out Contagion, which is a 2011 film, and understand that Contagion, uh, which which was hailed for being scientifically accurate by scientists, um, dealt with a 35% to 40% mortality rate. Uh, Ebola has something like an over 90% mortality rate, uh, which is much closer to the outbreak film. Uh, but you should watch Contagion also. And once again, you'll you'll feel like uh, the government in, in movies uh, works better than it does in reality. I mean, it at least takes it more seriously. Um, you know, yeah, it sure seems like, uh, you know, in the movies, they do everything to try and protect people. They may fail, uh, but in reality, it's like they roll out a welcome mat. You know, I mean, they don't even try to say, look, don't come straight from an infected area that's in, from an area that's infected with a pandemic. Um so, uh, you know, we have uh, a lot to worry about here because um, if, you, if you consider that viruses do mutate, and the more people you give it to, the more likely it is to mutate, um, they're not really 
uh, being concerned about uh, airborne transmission, which can happen because if you think about it, every sneeze is made up of particles of bodily fluids, uh, and when someone next to you inhales those bodily fluids, uh, they could be infected if you can be infected by bodily fluids. So uh, there's a a sort of uh, lackluster concern about that. Um, yes, so maybe some of the bodily fluids, such as uh, the sneeze, isn't enough to infect you with this particular virus, but maybe it is, and maybe we should be careful about that. Maybe they shouldn't be telling people, uh, oh, don't worry, that this is like the HIV virus, you can't get it from a sneeze. Um, who's to say? If it can be uh, given by, by bodily fluids, it's extremely virulent. It's, it, you can, it's extremely contagious and virulent. Um, maybe they should be taking it more serious and tell people to err on the side of caution rather than being overly calm. It's calm. Uh, sounds like a good thing until you realize that calm means lax, and lax means people can die because you gave them uh, bad information and made them overly uh, incautious. Check out Rent Wars episodes online. Go to our website, www.rentwars.com or to our YouTube channel that's on youtube.com and you can pick up episodes of Rent Wars uh, all of our most recent episodes are, are up there uh, our new episodes are going to be up there uh, going forward and our old episode library uh, from our past 10 years uh, that which wasn't destroyed by corrupt federal judges that is uh, will be put up there uh, piece by piece as well over time. So check out rentwars.com and see uh, episodes of Rent Wars and share episodes of Rent Wars with your friends who aren't fortunate enough to have cable television.